All right, so now we are going to be focusing on asymmetrical projectile launch notes. So again, you're gonna put that title at the top of the page, of the next page in your lab notebook, um, and follow along as we go. So the first thing is that we have this ball that is being launched asymmetrically. Um, what exactly does that mean? Um, Basically what that means is that we don't start and end at the same height. So that would look like something, I'm going to make sure that that's in the frame, something like this. So maybe the um, athlete is punting the ball instead of kicking the soccer ball this time. So we are going to have some symmetry because we do have objects that are, we do, the object is at the same height at certain moments in time. And we still have a peak. We're going to call this point B this time, this point A. This is C, and remember that that is at the same height at A. And then our final point is going to be below at D. So we have some given information again. The initial velocity is 15 meters per second at 30 degrees from the horizontal. And A starts 10 meters above the ground. So, we are going to make a chart and try to fill in everything that we can using symmetry only. So we've got four different locations. And we are actually going to look for the same information that we saw for before. So we're going to look at acceleration in the x direction, acceleration in the y direction, the velocity at that location in the y direction, the velocity, the resultant velocity, and the speed. So I hope you're wanting to fill in that acceleration in the x direction right away because you know it already. You've been practicing so much with your projectile problems. Again, that's the velocity at um, A in the y direction. So it's the component of the velocity of the y, in the y component of the velocity at location A, at location B. Whereas the velocity is more meaningful than that in that it tells you the direction, it tells you the speed the object is actually moving at, not just one of the components. Okay, so again, our acceleration in the x direction in projectile motion is zero. is constant velocity. Our acceleration in the y direction is that negative 9.8, that acceleration in free fall. And we do know one or a couple other pieces of information because they were either given to us or we can figure them out. The first one is we should know the velocity 
in the y direction at b. Zero. We also know the velocity at a. And we also know something else due to symmetry. We know the velocity at C is the same, except instead of at positive 30 degrees, it's at negative 30 degrees. So it's below the horizontal. And then we can also fill in some information about the speed at that location because speed is just the velocity without the direction portion. And we now need to solve for something. But instead of actually solving for it, um, we're just going to write it in terms of trig identities. So we've got our vector, initial velocity of 15. We want to draw in our components. In this case, it's up and to the right again, so our components are up the y direction and to the right, the x direction. And again, we can identify this as theta. We've got sine of theta is that opposite, which is, in this case, the y component. And again, we solve those for those unknown velocities. Multiply both sides by initial velocity. And you don't have to show this work every time. If you identify those trig identities right away, that's fine. You can just write them. Um, but be careful because that y direction is not necessarily always going to be sine theta, so be careful with that. Okay, so if I want to know my y component of my velocity at a, I just need to multiply my initial velocity by sine of 30. But I'm just going to write that in, so initial velocity of 15 times sine of 30. I don't need to write it again. And so here, by symmetry, it's going to be negative 15 sine, th sine 30, not theta, because it's down. And I actually also can fill in now velocity at B. It's the x component of the initial velocity because that x component is going to stay the same throughout the entirety of the motion. So similarly, I'm going to write this in like I did with the velocity at a in the y direction. And that is going to be the speed as well and this is at zero degrees. Now, to solve for the velocity at D, we will need to do some kinematics. And I am picking to go from A to D. Really, you could go from C to D. You could go from B to D. You could do several different things. I'm choosing to go from A to D. What's nice is that at D, I already know what my X component is. It's still 15 cosine 30. I still know what that X component is, so I just need to solve for the Y component.
And I also know what my displacement is because I know that it's ten, a, a, it's 10 meters above point D. So I'm choosing this equation. My initial velocity is going to be that 15 sine 30. My acceleration is still negative 9.8. And is my displacement positive 10 meters or negative 10 meters? Negative 10 because I'm being displaced in that negative direction. So I can simplify all of this. Make sure you keep that negative in there. I can solve for that velocity, that y component at d. Oops, this is a positive. Negative times a negative. And we get that velocity, the y component, at d to be 15.88. But it should be negative. It's got to be negative. It's down. So then I can solve for my velocity by using my x component of 15 times cosine 30 my y component of 15.88 and I can solve for theta and for that resultant velocity. So you try that. So hopefully you're getting something fairly similar with your trig identities. It makes sense because it should be a bigger velocity and our angle should also be bigger because our, v compo our y component is getting bigger. And so then we can finally fill in that last box. And that's all for the notes.